Legend of Legacy is a turn-based RPG originally released on the 3DS in 2015. It got very mixed reviews back then and a poor commercial reception. Today, this remaster was released on PS4, PS5, Switch and Windows, and that's the version I'll be reviewing today. Is it better now? Did it fix the issues that got it its mixed reception? Well, we're about to find out. First and foremost, I'd like to do an unboxing of the limited edition Nice America sent me. I'm really grateful for it, so besides my review, it's the least I can do. Plus, it's beautiful with a big focus on the original art style. The first thing we see here is the cloth piece, pretty well wrapped up. Of course, I unwrapped it and here is a picture of it full size. Beautiful. We've got the art book next, in hardcover, which is sweet colored pages with more artwork, some wallpapers, and characters. I like that they show the character poses here on the right, and on the left, there's the art of Tomomi Kobayashi, known for the Saga series. Next are these cool looking cards, seven in total, each with one of the main characters of the game. And finally, the soundtrack with 10 songs of the game. Yeah, overall, a really nice special edition on the PlayStation 5. Thanks again for the gift, Miss America. Now, Legend of Legacy is a game inspired by Squaresoft's Saga series. Actually, some of its people worked here. You can choose between seven different protagonists and each has their own default party members. However, you'll be able to recruit everybody else quite quickly. You won't have to do anything to recruit them though, they will join automatically. Not even two hours in and I already have them all but you can only take two of them besides the protagonist you choose, who can't ever be removed from the party. I chose Eloise as my main character for... Mm, plot reasons. Yeah. The story follows an island called Avalon that's been overrun by mysteries and monsters, so adventurers are coming from all over the world for many different reasons, but the primary reason is that the king will reward them if they help restore it. Your characters will take care of that by doing two things, restoring the areas with weak elemental power and by completing the maps and selling them. We'll get to that in a bit. There is actual interaction with your characters, but barely. Most of it will be at the beginning between your main character and the two default initial party members. But after that, this game will focus 90% on its gameplay rather than its story, and the plot will focus on your main character. Despite this, the plot is interesting, and there's a certain mystique to it that keeps pulling you in. It's no wonder the script was written by a legendary Chrono Trigger and Cross writer, Masato Kato. The graphics look absolutely stunning. They look beautiful in the original 3DS version, but this remaster brings them to a whole new shine. It's all detailed and the performance is great, with no frame rate issues and a quick interface with barely any loading times. The hand-drawn graphics stand out gorgeously and the character models are a treat to the eyes. Music is alright, there's not much variety since there's only one town, one battle theme and the soundtrack you'll hear in different areas. Some tunes do stand out though, but the rest is somewhat forgettable to be honest. Now let's talk about the gameplay. The town will be your base of operations with a shop, a trading post, a bar, an inn and the throne room. The latter is where you'll report to the king every time you restore an area. He'll reward you for this with items and money. Money is obviously used at the shop to buy healing items or equipment, and it has a different inventory every time you come back from the overworld. Characters can actually equip every type of weapon available, but they'll suck at most unless you keep training them. I recommend sticking to just one or two, cause after all, they can only equip up to two. The trade post charges you money to send ships to sea or other lands and bring back useful items or equipment. The higher the price, the higher the quality, but also the longer it'll take to come back. Ships take real in-game hours to come back, which is a chore, but since the game is a massive grind fest, it won't be exactly a problem. Yeah, you heard that right, the game's very grindy. You'll visit different areas out there full of monsters that you can fight to grind, but you do not level up here, just like in the Saga games. Instead, after every battle, you might get some random status increases like HP, SP, attack or a formation stat. 
Formation stats rely on the positioning of the characters during battle. These are played in turns, but you can change the formation before every player turn. In this example I'm showing you, the guy can act as a shield to reduce damage or completely block it when enemies attack the other two characters. He needs to be on front though, and you need to select the required ability during your turn. The game does lack a variety of informations though, but you can always create your own if you want to. Nothing however will change the fact that your stats will randomly increase after battle whenever. Exploration is all about completing the maps, every area has multiple segments you'll need to 100%, so you can sell those maps at the store and get more money. The more complete they are, the more money you get of course. Actually the seller himself will also sell you maps and that's how you'll make progress in this game. Anyway, going back to the exploration, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Completing maps is entirely optional since the goal of the game is to find ruins or caves inside the areas, fight the major boss and restore them. By exploring around you'll also find items you can sell at the store. No crafting system exists here or anything of the sort, so feel free to sell anything you want. You'll also find these structures or statues that will give you a spell item. You equip it and have to use it in battle to learn the appropriate spell, but first, you'll have to do a contract with the corresponding element in every area. Yeah, it's a bit convoluted, but you'll get the hang of it eventually. This is a game that requires patience after all. A lot of it. Now, the big question. Were the problems the original 3DS game had fixed? Did the developers improve the gameplay mechanics? Maybe I should tell you first what problems I'm referring to that got it its mixed reception. One of the biggest problems the original game had was that it was so hard to avoid the enemies. Often you'd get into battle because they were so fast to catch up with you after chasing you for a long time. Thankfully, the remaster fixed that and now it's easier to avoid the enemies or fool them around with the scenery. Plus, they don't chase you as often, so that's a relief. As you've clearly been noticing, objects appear as you advance. Trees, bushes, rocks, it looks beautiful to be honest. However, enemies also appear in the same way and sometimes you'll instantly run into them because of this. It's annoying and the remaster did not fix that. Another issue that wasn't fixed is one that was so infuriating and ridiculous in the original version. Running away from a battle takes you back to the entrance of the dungeon or area, not to the entrance of any other segment or screen, no! to the freaking beginning of the place. Thankfully, you carry over any progress like map completion, items and stat increases you got. And you know what, it's actually a great way to return to the entrance and then to town if you're tired or too hurt. But it shouldn't have to be like this. What if I want to simply escape from a battle and continue exploring exactly where I was? I'm not sure what kind of imbecile came up with this idea and it's very disappointing that they didn't fix it. Yet another issue that wasn't fixed is the reward system. Almost every single Saga game, Romancing Saga, Saga Frontier, etc. have the same issue. There's absolutely no point in fighting multiple enemies. The game does not reward you for it. Stat increases at the end of battle are so random that you could get a lot simply by fighting one enemy. It's not like you'll get more if you fight more enemies, nope. Which is why I told you that this game was a massive grind fest since the bosses can be quite cheap and difficult. Yeah, often you'll die for not having received those stat increases multiple times. And there's only the four stats that I mentioned, HP, SP, that you use for some skills, attack power and formation, no defense or resistance or agility, no. And to make matters even worse, the enemies seem to always start and often stun you so your character won't be able to act in that turn. To learn abilities, well, it's also kinda random. Often you just have to use the same skill over and over again until a character finally decides to randomly learn a new ability. Well, this isn't a complaint, it's also seen in the Saga games and also in the uh, follow-up successor to this game called The Alliance Alive. As a result of everything I've just ranted about, this game can be infuriating at times. I can't believe most of the problems weren't fixed and carried over as if nothing. Still though, exploration, combat and interface were vastly improved, so at least it makes up for its flaws with that. 
Overall, I think this is a game most people won't be able to get into. It focuses too much on its exploration and grinding, with not much to reward the player with. I didn't like the original 3DS version, but I did manage to appreciate it now with this remaster. I still think of it as a hidden gem, even though it's clearly not for everybody. Do I recommend it though? Yes, I do. This remaster, of course, unlike the 3DS original version. Just keep in mind everything that I said in this review. And that's all for today, guys. That was my review of Legend of Legacy HD Remaster for Modern Systems. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!